Hi everyone, welcome to my home gym. The topic for this video is maintenance and inspection on a Great Flex, but this can go for any sliding bench out there as they're all pretty similar in engineering and design. You know, you have your glide board, your glide rails, your rollers, your pulley system, cables, and handles. The only difference you'll find between all of them are the features they offer and the quality of the material. So before you use your sliding bench, it's important to refer back to the manufacturer's manuals and guides. So here's a snapshot from the Great Flex user manual under inspection and maintenance. Just like it states here, it's recommended that you check your equipment and accessories to make sure that they're functioning correctly before every use. And most importantly, that the safety pin is engaged. Now, if any of the equipment or accessories are damaged, do not use that equipment. Contact Great Flex immediately, and I would recommend take advantage of the lifetime warranty. So these Great Flex come standard with quick links and strap handles. And one thing to check for is that the quick links are screwed on tightly. I would recommend to use some pliers or channel locks to get them nice and snug and fit. If not, uh, just inspect them prior to every use to make sure that they're not unscrewing while in use. Now there are other options to replace these quick links and we'll go over that shortly. Here we have the standard strap handles and very good quality as I've had these for about six months now. What I'm looking for is if these straps are torn. It doesn't really make a difference if there's some threads sticking out the side because that's how these straps work. It's a bunch of threads working together to make the strap itself. So if they're torn, that's whenever you should contact Great Flex and stop using the handles. So here are the upgrades that I have to replace the quick links and the strap handles. It's a carabiner followed by a, a swing swivel, followed by another carabiner clip, and the metal chrome total gym handles. I'll put links in the description so you can know where to find these accessories, and I have a previous video out on why I chose these uh, accessories over the strap handles and the quick links. Moving on to the spring-loaded knob, and it's just important to verify that the, that the knob is engaged in a specific level. Now here's a quick safety tip regarding the spring-loaded knob. Do not grab it from the inside of the knob, but rather in the outside, otherwise you might pinch yourself when moving to different levels. So regarding the safety pin, just make sure it's engaged when in use. It'll take a lot to mess with the integrity of these pins, but if it does bend, contact Great Flex. So a proper inspection would mean to check every bolt on the unit. And what we're trying to accomplish is to ensure that the bolts are not at risk of unscrewing. So that's basically what I'm doing now. I'm going to every bolt on this unit, you know, starting from the top and the tower to the glide rails. And these specifically, you don't want them too tight. Otherwise, you'll have some issues when trying to fold the great flex. But just ensuring that, you know, they're not loose. So just putting your hands on the bolt and uh, making sure that they're not moving. Moving down to the base of the tower, uh, same concept, just making sure that the, that the nuts are not moving on there. I found two more bolts on the center of the machine. Now these will take an Allen wrench, a hex type to screw and unscrew. So just putting my hands on it, making sure it's not moving. We have one more bolt in the center of the pulley system and God forbid if this bolt came loose during a workout, it could be a potential injury. Moving on to the cables. Now these cables have a plastic lining around them. If that plastic lining is cracked or broken and the cables are exposed and wires are exposed, I would replace them. They're not that expensive or roughly around $20 on Amazon or from on the manufacturer. So moving on to maintenance, we'll start off with the glide rail. You want to make sure that there's no dirt or grime on these glide rails. You know, these rollers are rolling on them and if you leave any dirt on there, it will compact and affect the integrity over time. So I typically use a cloth like a shop rag before and after my workouts to wipe them down. You don't want to use any oil based products like WD-40 which can attract dirt on these glide rails. So be mindful of that. For the rest of the unit, I would recommend this cleaning solvent. I found it on Amazon. I had some pretty good reviews. It's one of those natural products. Smells really good. I use it on the glide board, you know, the handles, um, and some of the, uh, the other accessories as well. It works pretty good so far. I'll put a link in the description to know where to get it. 
So after every workout, I spray down the glide board with the cleaning solvent and I wipe it down with a shop rag. You know, I've had this great flex for almost a year now and I use it consistently. I make sure and wipe it down after every use and the glide board seems to be holding up just fine. And I think it has a lot to do with putting forth these preventive maintenance efforts. So after I wipe down the glide board, I do a quick wipe down of the chrome handles, the swing swivels, and the carabiner clips. From there it's the pulley system, you know, both on the top close to the tower and the main pulley uh, down in the center of the machine. And that's pretty much it as far as uh, wiping down after every use. So I wanted to go a little more in depth and check out the rollers. So we're going to remove the glide board, which is fairly easy. Just disconnect the pulley and pull up the glide board until it disconnects. Lay it on its back. And here we have a good close up of the rollers. Here are the bottom rollers and what we're looking at is kind of just some discoloration, some compact, a little bit of compact dirt. Um, as my finger glides around it, it, it doesn't really make an indention. So this kind of mostly discoloration so what we're gonna do is get a rag and and uh you know just brush off anything we can get off of these rollers here's a close-up of the top rollers and notice how they're a little cleaner than the bottom ones this just tells me that i need to clean the bottom rails a little more than the top uh, going forward so just getting a shop rag and going through each roller and just brushing them off trying to get any excess of dirt and compact dirt off of them not really using a solvent for this, uh, it's really just a dry, a dry shop rag. So here we have a close up of the bottom rails and you can see discoloration but that's not compact dirt. My fingers, you know, gliding over it uh, without a problem. It's just really discoloration. But after seeing the top rollers looking better than the bottom, I'm going to pay more attention to cleaning off uh, the bottom uh, glide rails after every use. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the glide board. So what you'll have to do is just line up the rollers with the glide rails and it should slip right in without a problem. All right, this next part is specifically for the Great Flex. I found some metal to metal contact that is definitely affecting the integrity of, of the tower. As you can see here, we have some uh, paint chipped away and a little bit of rust as the pulley system is rubbing whenever I'm using the machine. So I thought to myself, what can I do to address this issue? And I found on Amazon.com some silicone rubber sheets, uh, fairly inexpensive, and uh, went ahead and used that. So I ordered them, got some in, cut it out, cut out some strips and uh, installed them under both pieces of uh, metal on the pulley system. So here's a close up of what I have. So far it's holding up, it's kind of addressing the issue. I'll probably have another video in the future uh, on the progress of that. So storing the Great Flex, be very cautious when you're putting this machine away. Uh, watch for pinch points and hand placement. But basically three steps, bring the tower down to zero, uh, pull the tower in about halfway, lift up the machine from the center, do not let go of that tower. Uh, then bring the tower in the rest of the, the way and fold the machine together. That's pretty much it. If you have any questions, please reach out in the comments section. Thanks for watching everyone. God bless.